My name is Kieran Kennedy, Education Training Officer for Westminster Examiner Service NHS Trust and today I'm going to be talking you through the abdominal system assessment I'm going to be utilising my colleague Aaron as a simulated casualty for today's uh, demonstration. The abdominal system assessment incorporates the four key assessment tools of inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. However, we are going to change the order in which we utilise those tools and I'll explain more as we go through this uh, video. So Aaron, Obviously you've explained to me already about the fact that you've got some abdominal pain today, hence the reason why you're here. Now in order for me to try and come up with a better diagnosis, um, I'm going to need to do an abdominal system exam. Is that okay? That's fine. So what I'm going to need you to do for me, if you can, is just remove your shirt and then I'm going to ask you just to undo your trousers and just take it down to the waistline for me. Alright? Now whilst you're already sat up in that position, I'm just going to take a note of the back. Okay, for any scar marks, any operations, surgical procedures you may have had. And I'm also going to lay down flat, okay? Are you comfortable going flat? Yeah, fine. Okay. okay. If the patient's not comfortable going flat, then obviously, you know, semi recumbent, you can undertake an assessment in that area. However, it's more beneficial if they are flat. You can also use a pillow under the head. So, when looking at the abdomen, we're going to just look and see if there are any obvious. Uh, sort of irregularities within it. It should look symmetrical in its appearance. It should be soft and non-tender. Scar marks, for example, you may look for uh, if you were thinking the patient had uh, an ulcer problem and they've had to have emergency surgery, you would see a scar mark directly down the middle of the abdominal cavity itself. If the patient's had some previous cardiac surgery, you may also see scarring down through the sternum itself. Kidney surgery normally results in scar marks on the back of the abdomen, uh, we've already looked there. If it's an appendicitis, the right iliac fossa in the nicoli. If the patient had had a C-section, again, the nicoli across uh, that region. Gallbladder operation may result in a scar on the right upper quadrant. And other things to consider, laparoscopy marks in and around the belly button. These might be very minute and well hidden. Hopefully, the history will have identified any previous surgery that your patients had. We're going to come down and we're going to look across the abdomen in a horizontal plane. And we're going to look for the five Fs. Two things we find inside the bowel, such as feces or fecal matter and flatus, which is wing. Outside of the bowel, we're going to look for fat, consider fluid, and also if the patient was female, would also consider a fetus. If you note any of the five Fs, then you need to ascertain what they are and you can request that information through your history. Okay, Aaron, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to have a listen to your stomach. So when we did respiratory system exam, we did inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. However, in this scenario, we're going to inspect first, which we've already done, and then we're going to auscultate next. The reason we auscultate before palpation is that we're trying to elicit bowel sounds, and by compressing the abdominal cavity, when you do palpation, you may actually create false bowel sounds. The bowel sounds themselves can be heard in any of the four quadrants, and we're going to utilize the umbilicus to split it up into the upper right quadrant, upper left quadrant, lower left quadrant and lower right quadrant. We're going to listen in one area for no more than 30 seconds. Once we've heard bowel sounds, then we can stop that part of the assessment. However, should I not be able to hear bowel sounds for 30 seconds in one specific area, then I'm going to move across and listen for another 30 seconds in another area. Should you get to the end of the assessment and not hear bowel sounds at all, then you need to look at your history to confirm the reasons as to why. Okay, but uh, so I'm just going to put this on. And very quickly, I've identified bowel sounds in the lower left quadrant. So we've been inspected, we've auscultated, and now we're going to palpate. So I'm going to start by palpating with one hand using the flats of my fingertips and we're going to scan the area. As we scan, it should be soft, 
it should be non-tender. I'm going to be looking at my patient's facial expressions to indicate any sort of pain that I may be creating through palpation. And I'm also going to be feeling for guarding. And this is where the patient contracts their stomach muscles to protect themselves when pain is felt upon palpation. Wherever possible, always palpate furthest away from the area where the pain has been experienced by the patient. So Aaron, all I'm going to do is just have a feel of your abdomen now, okay? Yep. Relax for me. And we're just lightly scanning the areas. Okay, I'm just going to repeat that process. This time I'm going to go a little bit deeper, which means that it may become a little bit more painful. If it does, I'm just, just tell me and I'll stop. Okay, and then we'll wait for the pain to subside and carry on. Just noting the patient's facial expressions. Okay, he's grimacing a little bit there. So we have a little bit of pain, so we're just going to stop. Wait for that pain to subside. Is that subsided? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and a little bit deeper. And we've noted a little bit of guarding as well in the lower left quadrant. Okay, so we've inspected, we've palpated, uh, we're going to obviously consider percussion. Now when we percuss, a couple of reasons for doing that. First and foremost, if there's fluid present, more prominent when we have a patient who has potential liver failure associated with maybe alcoholism. And also if we're considering a bowel obstruction, then we can percuss for bowel um, fecal matter and or um, trapped wind. So I'm just going to percuss the abdomen. Now the bowel itself, when we look at the large intestine, is split into the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, and then from the descending colon down into the rectum and the anus. If we start in the lower left quadrant and we're going to percuss work our way up and we can hear how as we've gone round the sounds have become more duller in the lower portion of the ascending colon. If your patient is constipated or there is a history of uh, non-bowel movement for several days then that may display itself when you uh, look and take a visual inspection of the abdomen, but also when you percuss. We're now going to assess for shifting dullness. Shifting dullness, as we've already mentioned, is where we get a significant volume of fluid being retained within the peritoneal cavity, more often or not associated with liver failure. When that liver sit, when the water sits within the abdominal cavity, it will normally gravitate to the lowest portions, so down on the side. So what we're going to do is we're going to percuss the top of the dome and then we're going to percuss the sides. Now when we move the patient over, the dull sound we hear on the sides should then shift and the fluid should then move towards the centre of the abdomen. So if I can get you to rotate onto the other side for me. So that fluid should now gravitate towards the lower portion. Now in this case, we still have hyperresonance and hyporesonance. So there's no fluid change there whatsoever. So there's no indication of ascites. Okay, I wonder if you just try to drop that back. So we've inspected, we auscultated, we palpated, and then we percussed. Aaron, that's the end of the abdominal system assessment. And you can sit it now and put your shirt on for me. Thank you.